Hi, my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today we've got a tawny shark uh, with black pigmentation on the skin and we're wondering what it is. These sharks were adopted by the Irukandji Shark and Ray Centre in Newcastle, Australia. When these sharks arrived from the other aquarium, they already had these black skin lesions. The new caring owners, Ryan and Leah, have called me to investigate and to help find a cure. So this initially looked like an infectious disease because uh, it seemed to be spreading from where it was initially occurring on the skin of the sharks. And uh, the, Ryan describes these lesions as being quite friable. Every time it knocks on something, it would start to bleed. Ryan took a scraping, looked at it down the microscope, took a picture of it and sent it to Vancouver Aquarium to get a second opinion. And they diagnosed it as being some sort of a fungal pathogen. So we're going to have a look now and see what we can actually find. So here are some of the original images that Ryan sent off to Vancouver Aquarium. It is a skin scrape mounted under a wet preparation down a microscope. You can see these black branching uh, structures that do resemble fungal hyphae. So we're going to take some samples for ourselves to see what is causing these black skin lesions in these sharks. To do this, we're going to have to anesthetize the shark so that we can get our samples without hurting the shark and without endangering ourselves. And the sharks are very big, powerful, muscular fish and they have also got the skin that is hard and scratchy like a sandpaper. We've tried anesthetizing the shark with the shark underwater by using a syringe filled with concentrated anesthetic and uh, that does not seem to be working and we realize the reason for that is that the tawny sharks can actually breathe in two directions so uh, most fish would be breathing through the mouth and out the gills but uh, when the shark feels that this anesthetic is in the water what it does is it actually sucks water through the spiracles and pumps it back out through the mouth so in a reverse uh, action so what we're trying now to do is we're actually lifting the shark's head out of the water so it reduces its ability to do the reverse uh, breathing and we're able to put the anesthetic into the mouth and let it flush over the gills so that the anesthetic can be absorbed into the bloodstream. So now we've got our shark suitably sedated. We're taking a skin scrape. And next, before we do a, gill, a skin biopsy, we're going to give him some flunixin as an anti-inflammatory because it's going to be a painful procedure at 0.5 milligrams per kilogram body weight of flunixin. So here's our screen scrape under the microscope. You can see it's much the same features as what uh, Ryan had initially sent to Vancouver Aquarium to have a look. So these are sort of chunks of skin epithelium and interspersed through it is this black pigmented material and they are branching and they're also forming clumps. So it's not revealed too much more than what we already knew. So next thing is we're going to take a histology section to do this. We're going to take a skin biopsy. You can see the toughness of the skin of the shark. So what we're doing is we're stabbing the scalpel blade in and then now we're going to cut it out from the inside out. With the histology, it's a much more powerful tool than just a wet mount preparation or a plain cytology. Uh, because you can apply a lot more stains and look at the cellular detail in much higher magnification. So that skin biopsy, we popped it into neutral buffered formalin for lab testing. Now we're just going to put some um, antiseptic over the wound that we've created to prevent any bacterial infection setting in. So we're overlaying multiple layers of this fish bandage with betadine and this should give it some residual activity while the skin heals over. The beauty of using the fish bandage with the betadine is that um, it just sticks to the skin so that when the shark goes back into the water, you can see it does not wash off at all. So now that we've got our sample, we're going to revive her. And to do this, we're positioning her near the water surface at the water inlet so she'll get new fresh clean seawater without the anesthetic flushing through her gills to get rid of any anesthetic that's left in her system 
And we're going to check on her recovery by checking the menace response. So in this case, it looks like she's blinking, but she's actually pulling her eyes back into her skull. And this is a natural uh, type of behavior, especially when fish, when sharks are hunting or when they're devouring prey to protect their eyes from damage. So we've done some lab testing. Our fungal cultures show that there's no evidence of fungi. I've also done histopathology where there's no evidence of pathogens either. Uh, what we can see is that the epithelium seems to be thrown into folds and there's also vascularization quite close to the epithelium, uh, making it bleed quite easily and be quite fragile. We don't really know what it is, so the next step we're going to do is that we're going to refer it for second opinion to my colleagues overseas. So stay tuned and we'll update you on results of this mysterious disease. One of the aquarists from an international aquarium shared with us a treatment protocol that worked for them in the past because they had similar lesions in their sharks. It was a treatment of vitamin B12 injections every three hours for three days and enrofloxacin antibiotic every five days for three treatments. So we tried this on a shark and the lesions miraculously disappeared. What puzzles me though is that if this was in fact a fungal disease, enrofloxacin antibiotic should not have any effect against the fungus. It would only affect if it was a bacterial infection. Moreover, overuse of antibiotics might actually promote fungal growth and fungal diseases. So what I was thinking is that the enrofloxacin did not have any role to play in the healing of this fish skin disease what in fact may be the healer was the vitamin B12 injections. I scoured the literature and came across an article um, where it states that skin hyperpigmentation in humans due to vitamin B12 deficiency masquerading with as Addison's pigmentation. And what happens in the humans is that with a deficiency in vitamin B12, what happens to the skin and the hands and feet will sort of get excess um, black coloration and there will also be increase in the amount of skin that's produced and this really really is very similar to what we're seeing in our sharks <laughs> it's not always possible to get a diagnosis through lab testing alone and in this case it's a great way to show that you can get a diagnosis by response to treatment. With the new improved diet at this new facility, they're on the road to recovery and to better health. Here you can see the skin lesions have completely disappeared and they're happy and healthy thanks to the great care given to them by the Irukandji Shark and Ray Centre. So if you're ever in the region of Newcastle in New South Wales, Australia, make sure you come and visit the Irukandji Shark and Ray Centre where you can meet these lovely owners and don't forget the fish where you can actually get in there and feed and pet them as well. So that's all from me. Make sure you subscribe to get updates of our future videos and have a fantastic week.